folks, Dave the Bartender here. Uh, welcome back to another video. Now, first of all, I have to apologize for the slow rate that I'm getting videos up these days. Uh, I've been very busy at work, and a lot of my hobby time is actually spent painting stuff up for uh, the demo, demo armies and uh, blogs for my job. Um, so I do have a lot of new stuff that I've been working on and I am in the process of uh, converting some of the stills into video shots and things like that. Um, here is a little work in progress on something I've been working on. This is a 172nd scale Mark A Whippet, which was the uh, British World War I medium tank. I think they came into service in about 1917. And I've been working on this um, to try out some new techniques and um, products which were in the AK Interactive Weathering FAQ. Um, and also to try my hand at some scale modelling uh, in preparation for a show which I am attending this upcoming weekend. Um, so I'll be running the retail store for my job and I'll be uh, doing some weathering demonstrations and things like that, showcasing a few different products. So this is the first scale model kit that I've done in probably 15 years or more. Um, I used to do a lot of a lot of airfix kits um, and time air kits back in the day when I was a kid. Um, so it's nice to go back to them now when I've got a bit more patience, I've got a bit more technique, um, and really do the kits justice. Um, so this particular kit is by MH. Um, they're a supplier who pop up every now and then. They do some really good um, some really good kits, but they're quite hard to find a lot of the time. Um, they come out of China, I believe. Um, and if you're looking for World War One tanks, they're about one of the only manufacturers who do it. Um, so this was a really easy kit to put together. Um, there are only about seven or eight um, different pieces for the hull. Um, the one tricky thing was getting the machine guns uh, mounted because they've got to come through the uh, the hole in the hull itself. Um, so you've got to poke them through. So. While I was doing it, I think I snapped off two of the front sights on the guns, so I ended up just cutting all the front sights off, because um, at this scale I couldn't redo them, and it looked better having no sights as opposed to having two sights on two guns and no sights on the rest of them. Um, so this model I've also done a lot of colour modulation, um, and some oil washes and pin washes and things which I normally don't do on my 40k stuff, so I'll just give it a quick spin round. So you see on these raised surfaces here, and uh, this panel and this panel here, it's got quite a lighter colour. Um, now that's been done with a couple of different techniques. Uh, when I did my base coats, I did uh, colour modulation, which is just gradually building up a lighter colour on the um, certain areas you want to highlight out. But then I've also gone through and done some oil paint um, highlighting and shading across the whole model. Um, so I'm just using some some artists oils. Um, now this is a 40 mil tube. Um, I think that will last me pretty much forever because um, you're only putting tiny little dots in. Um, and what I've done is I put some some small dots just along the top edges here of white, and then in the middle of the panel I did yellow, and then in the bottom of the panel I did brown. And then I took some of this stuff, uh, quick drying petroleum. Um, it's kind of like white spirit. Um, it's got quite a big smell to it, so you want to make sure that you're using it with the windows open. But I just took some of that and then a flat brush and just kind of worked everything down. And it blends the different oils through, um, so it gives a nice color transition. Um, and it will especially show up on the the side of the tank here, you've got a colour transition from quite a white highlight down to quite a darker sort of brown. And then in these shaded areas I used some um, some quite dark blue and then just stumped that with the with the petroleum or white spirit and that just gave the shade gave the shades a lot more depth um, and a bit more vibrant sort of colour. Then I've gone through and given everything a pin wash um, so I did pin wash first and oil second. Um, so the pin wash was just using AK Interactive uh, dark streaking grime and some odorless turpentine just to thin it down so it only sits in the recesses. 
and then the tracks got given a coat of the AK track wash and then after that had dried I then went and did some um, some stippling using model mates rust effects liquid um, this is one of my favorite products ever because um, it gives really good realistic rust effects so now I'm about halfway through the process or two-thirds of the way through um, all the base coats and everything are done I just need to um, tidy up the guns I'm not happy with how they're looking at the moment so I'm going to go back and repaint them black and then probably just give them a dry brush of bolt gun metal just to give us a darker metal uh, but from here on I'm going to start adding the dust effects um, to the, the horizontal panels and in the small sort of joins and stuff like that where dust would accumulate as well as adding some dust effects to the track. After the dust will be the mud um, and so that will probably be just two two layers of mud. I'll do a, um, a lighter dried mud and a darker fresh mud. Uh, so that's going to be applied around the tracks and low edges of the holes and things like that. I'm just holding off on doing that just yet because I need some new uh, microsole uh, for the decals. Um, because there's some decals which have to go on these lower track areas which um, I need to apply before I do the mud. Otherwise they will never look right. So I'm quite happy with how this is, how this is coming along. Um, techniques like pin washing and the oil, oil colours and highlighting it sounds a little bit daunting when you first start doing them. Um, when I first looked at the, the AK book, um, I found them a little bit scary, um, especially once you've got a whole lot of different coloured polka dots on your model. But they work really well, and it allows you to do things like just sort of pushing around paint and stuff like that on the panels that you just can't do with acrylics. Um, so, yep, that's the first thing I've been working on, and I'll have uh, some more videos coming up probably in two weeks I just need to get to the other side of this show um, and then I can do a whole lot more a um, whole lot more content and stuff coming but uh, a little wee sneak peek here's some of the stuff I've been working on for work for Flames of War um, so this is a Stug and we've got some German infantry as well um, so I've got a huge stack of photos um, and some videos too which just need editing and then I'll have a whole lot of Flames of War content coming up soon so cheers guys welcome to uh, the new subscribers who've joined up in the last month or so um, really appreciate you subscribing to the channel and I look forward to uh, getting some more content up to you soon um, feel free to drop a comment if there's anything in particular you're looking for or if you want me to explain uh, any of the techniques I've just been talking about in a tutorial vid and I'll see what I can do. So until next time, thanks for watching guys.